Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to discuss and test another feature of the Asus Wi-Fi routers which is the dual one failover functionality. Again, I would like to say thanks to our friends at Asus Philippines for making this possible. And for today's devices, we are going to configure the dual one functionality on the ROG Raptor AX6000. This is it. While the Zen Mini Wi-Fi will be responsible for our source of internet where it is actually connected to Converge. The reason why we are not directing the ROG Raptor to a Converge modem router is so we can block the internet access of the ROG Rapture with the use of the Zen Wi-Fi Mini later on. While our other source of internet connection is from a wireless modem router which has a smart SIM card connected to it. This is it. Okay, now let me show you on the physical configuration of our setup. For our setup, this is the ROG Rapture again and it has already two LAN cable connected, okay? This is the Zen Wi-Fi Mini and it has two LAN cable connected. The blue one is actually directed or connected to the Converge modem router while the yellow one is connected to the one port of this ROG Rapture and the other one is the LAN port on this Zen Wi-Fi Mini. This will be our main source of internet or our primary one which is Converge while the other one, as you can see, there is only one cable connected and this is a modem router. Wi-Fi modem router and as you can see there is a LAN cable connected on at the back and the other end is actually connected on the LAN 1 port of this ROG Rapture. So there is no other thing that is actually connected. So this is live. We are not uh, trying to hide anything. We have two separate internet service provider for now. And now let me try to show you on how to configure it using the web management console. Under the web management console, just go to the one menu, click on this one, and then go to the dual one tab. Then under the dual one tab, you just need to enable dual one. And for our configuration, our primary one was already configured as the one port. You can actually choose USB or Ethernet LAN for your primary one. But for us, we're going to choose one. And the next one will be the secondary one. The second source of your internet access and for us we're going to use an ethernet lan and we have already connected that one and it is connected to the lan port the other modem router that we have is connected to the lan port of our rog rapture wi-fi router and for the dual one mode we're going to configure this only for failover then of course we're going to allow failback and for our auto network detection we'll just uh, set this one to nine and when current one fails for two continuous times fail over to the secondary one you can actually configure or change this one according to your needs or once it depends on your configuration then after that one we can actually set the other things like network monitoring with continuous ping or dns query but for us we're going to use ping then the server or the website that we're going to ping is google.com then we're going to hit on apply then Rebooting your router will cause connected devices to lose internet connection. All devices will regain internet connectivity after completing the reboot process. And we are going to hit OK. After the configuration, let us now try to check the network map. OK, and as you can see in here, primary one connected while the secondary one is on hot standby. We already have configured the dual one and let me show you on how it actually works by testing it. Okay guys, right now we have three windows in here. First window is the command prompt. We are trying to do a continuous ping to google.com to make sure that we are connected to the internet. The second window will be the web management console of the ROG Rapture GTA X6000 our Wi-Fi router that we have configured the dual one functionality. And the third one will be my mobile phone and it's actually managing or showing the Zen Wi-Fi Mini. This is where actually the ROG Rapture is currently connected for its primary one. Okay, and let's try to check and open a new window and see for speed test. Okay, as you can see here, Every time you open a speed test on my desktop, you'll be able to see that it will show you your source of internet connection. So right now we are on Converge because we are actually using the primary one connected. This one is actually for the Converge primary one. The secondary one will be for Smart, the second modem router. And right now, let us try to open a 
timer as well to see on how long it will take to transition to the other node and give me back my internet access. So hit on block. Okay, and timer. Okay guys, and right now, as you can see in here, uh, even though the web management console is not yet uh, updating that it's connected to the secondary one, we already have internet connection as an indication here that we are able to ping google.com. And right now, it appears that it is already connected, but even though the main or the management console doesn't give us an updated information, we are already connected to the internet. And it took us less than 30 seconds to transition from the primary one to the secondary one. And just to make sure, let us try to check or open a web browser and hit speed test. And right now, as you can see here, when we open speedtest.net, it is referring to smart as our source of internet connection. So right now, let us try to go back and try to see on how fast it will transition back to the main or the primary one. And let us try to reset this one and hit unblock and hit go. Okay, as you can see in here, it is already connected. It took us uh, less than 10 seconds. I forgot to hit uh, stop, but it look, took us less than 10 seconds to actually transition from the secondary one to the primary one. Just to make sure, let us try to open again our speed test and make sure that we are connected to the Converge. As you can see here, we are connected to the Converge Internet Service Provider. The transition from the main one to the secondary one took less than 30 seconds. It is actually faster compared to what they have posted of at least 60 seconds spill over on their website. While the payback is actually fast, to better understand on how it works, let us try to do a demo on a messenger call so you can actually grasp on what is actually happening during the test. Okay guys, right now I'm doing a video call on my computer and as you can see, it is actually working at the same time, I have here my camera and this mobile phone I'm holding. As you can see, it's actual a live footage on the test that we're going to do. So let's try to disable the internet connection for our LAN 1. Hit block, then OK. OK, and let's try to wait for a couple of minutes or seconds. As you can see, it is already timed out. And as you can see here on the video call or the web call, it is actually stuck or it is stopped on sending us a live footage and there is already a downtime for this one but let's try to check if it will get disconnected or it will resume after it has transitioned to the other one okay we have already two four six and it's already back so our video call should already be back yes as you can see in here we have our live call on my mobile phone and my computer it is now actually working it took us uh, less than 30 seconds i believe and now let us try to transition back on how fast it will give us our internet connection through the main one so okay connected and primary one is disconnected then hit unblock on our mobile phone send wi-fi okay and let us try to check i'll try to show you that this actually doesn't have any uh, downtime or very minimal downtime to transition to the other node okay and it's still working still working and uh, i would like to say thanks to our friends at asus for giving us a chance for this one as you can see even though we have a single time out on our computer the video call during the transition back to the main one is actually smooth Okay, you have seen on how it works. The transition from the primary one to the secondary one is still okay. Our messenger call didn't get dropped or get disconnected while the peel back to the main one or the primary one is actually smooth. And we didn't even notice that it actually transitioned from the secondary to the primary one. The dual one failover works great. I believe it is for everyone who is relying so much on internet connection. An example on why we need this functionality is let us say you already have your main source of internet connection. In our case, we have Converge. And what happens in an outage is that you might actually think that there is just a glitch or a drop connection and the internet will go back in just a few seconds or minutes. But in reality, there might be an actual outage and the internet might not get back on an hour or maybe even in a day. 
So there will be loss of productivity while there is an outage. While if you have a backup that is already configured, you will be back online in less than 30 seconds. So your productivity will go on. You might say that I don't really need a dual one functionality because if my internet is disconnected from my main source of internet, I still have the backup and I just connect manually to that backup internet source. Yes, it might be true, but it will take longer to configure or assess that the internet is actually down. So you may check uh, while waiting. It will take so much time. And connecting to the backup as well will take time. And there will still be a lot of time wasted just to go back online. Unlike you have your dual one functionality. I believe that is all. If you have comment and suggestion, comment down below or message me at GK Chavez on FB. Please hit that subscribe button if you're not yet subscribed. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe and bye.